Hey everybody, welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. This is video two of the wiring and electrical conversion in the V6 to V8 Camaro swap project. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I found the pinouts and information to work the V6 wire harness that I needed into the V8 harness and PCM. And I'm also gonna show you how I routed the harness and got it all sorted out and tidy in the engine bay so I won't have to worry about the wiring once I get this thing up and running. Without any more chat, let's get right to it and let me show you how I did this stuff. Okay, everybody. So I wanna show you how I, I what my wife told me is called crosswalking. How I crosswalked the, the wiring pinouts for these PCM connectors, converting the V6 Camaro to V8. So the, the PCM connectors in the V6 car, one is blue and one is clear. And the PCM connectors in the Envoy, one is blue and one is green. So essentially, the blue connectors are mostly the same and the green and clear are mostly the same. And I'll give a couple examples here. So in the clear connector from the V6 Camaro wire harness, clear connector pin number eight is a white wire for the engine speed signal. So that wire is engine speed signal to the PCM. So I need to find that terminal, that pin location in the Envoy harness, the Envoy connector. So I look and because I'm cross-referencing, I believe the clear and green are pretty much the same place, different color. I see green 10 is engine speed signal, circuit 121, also a white wire. So I know because those two, that wire has the identical description, color, and circuit number in both harnesses, that all I need to do is put that white wire into pin 10 on the green connector of the Envoy harness. And that should tell the Envoy PCM what it needs to know. So let's do another one. I have another wire from the clear connector in the V6 Camaro harness. It was clear terminal 69. And in the Camaro harness, that is the fuel level sensor signal primary. So I need to cross-reference that over, find the fuel lever, fuel level sensor signal primary in the Envoy connector list. So on the Envoy, there it is. Pin 54 in the green connector is fuel level sensor signal primary. So I know that I can take that wire from the Camaro harness. If I plug it into pin 54 on the green connector, that will give the PCM the proper signal from the fuel level sensor. And I went through that harness that I pulled from the V6 Camaro. I matched up all of the pins that I pulled out of the PCM using that same process. I had a little bit of everything. I had some wires that I wasn't going to need. I had some wires that I needed to move to a different location in the connector. I think I had one or two wires that would need to be moved into the other connector. And I had some wires that just could be eliminated altogether from that Camaro portion of the harness. This, the wire harness information or the pinout list for the Envoy I found at lt1swap.com. There's a ton of good information on that website. Make sure you check it out if you're doing any kind of wiring work or, or wiring troubleshooting. The Camaro harness pinout uh, I found through a Camaro forum. These things are old enough. You can find all this information readily available on the internet. Just use whatever search engine you prefer, look for it, and you can find it. All right, next day, I'm getting back after it on the wiring. Got my harness laid out and marked from the Envoy. I've got the pieces I need from 
the Malibu, or sorry, the Impala, and somewhere around here, over on the car, I've got my Camaro pieces that I need. So at this point, I'm going to start laying the Envoy harness onto the engine and getting figured out where I need to make connections, where I need to start splicing things in. All right, everybody, time for a little update. So I've been plugging away on this thing now. And I've got most of my wiring up here on top of the engine complete. So all my fuel injectors, my ignition coils, throttle body, map sensor, uh, coolant temp sensor, control wires for the alternator, and then injectors and coils on this side as well. All wired in, wires routed really nicely. Everything's spliced into where I need it spliced in. So I, I'm at the point. I need to get the, the lower portion of the wiring added onto this thing, which is the crank position sensor the exciter wire for the starter and I think that's it um, I'm also at the point that I can remove what I don't need from the PCM connectors and get the Camaro harness piece that I have spliced in and put where it needs to go so uh, that's gonna require a few more splices of the battery feed wires, the battery, the 12 volt positive wires that control or that feed the injectors and the coil packs uh, and, and some sensors. All right, everybody, so uh, not as much progress this evening as I had hoped. I've got quite a wiring, I don't want to call it a mess, but it's definitely not organized. One of the things that slowed me down is this connector here. So I've got a couple wires that come from this connector and go to the TAC module plug. I need to figure out exactly where they go to from this connector. And then I've got two or three other wires that come from it and go to the PCM. So I need to look all those up and figure out exactly uh, what it is that they do. I also have a few wires from the Camaro harness that I was unable to find that pin location on the Envoy PCM connectors. So I need to find out exactly what those wires require, whether it be battery voltage, ignition voltage, ground, sent to some kind of switch, figure out what exactly those wires are for so I can figure out where I need to put them. So a bit more digging to do but I'll get it figured out. All right, everybody. I've reached the point in this wiring that I need to get the engine back in the car. So pretty much all of my top end wiring is routed, connected, uh, where I want it to be. I use just little zip ties to hold everything in place until I can actually wrap it with wire looming. I need to get it into the car so I can get my PCM connectors, make sure I have enough length to get to where the PCM mounts, 
and all my other connectors are correct as well. So we'll pick back up once I have the engine in the car. All right, everybody, so I'm back out in the garage. This mess is my hopefully ready to go wire harness. I'm still gonna need to make some ground and power connections, but I think I've got all of my crosswalking and everything else figured out and done. So I need to get it back into the car. I need to figure out uh, exactly where I'm gonna route all the wires that aren't the engine harness. And I need to essentially start getting it organized and laid out in the car. So hopefully I can get this thing started. Okay, so what I'm working on right now is extending my harness. My, my main engine harness here that runs uh, the fuel injectors, the coil packs, all of that stuff, it just plain wasn't long enough to reach the PCM um, and have everything connected up. So. I didn't want to do this, but I find that it's necessary. I'm extending all of those wires a bit so that not only will I be able to keep the wire harness tucked up tight against the firewall in the back where it's out of sight, but I'll have plenty of slack. So if the engine torques over or moves or anything like that, it's not gonna be pulling against the PCM connectors and the, and the terminal pins. So I suspected I was gonna have to do this. I was hopeful that I wouldn't, especially cause it's, I mean, it's like 35, 40 wires that each one I need to cut, splice in a section and then put back together. But I'm almost done now. I'm working on the last well, four wires here and then I'll be able to get everything plugged in, connected, and hopefully see if I can at least get the thing to crank over. As far as extending this harness goes, pretty simple. Cut the wire that you need to make longer. Splice in the amount of wire that you need to extend that section by. This is where having Remember all that wiring that we weeded out of the harness for the transmission, automatic transmission control and that sort of stuff. This is where having that extra wire comes in handy. Because I have plenty of additional wire. I'm able to match up most of the wire colors. wires spliced together here and I'll be able to finish routing this harness the way I want it to be routed get all my powers and grounds routed and connected to where they need to be and finally be done with this electrical work It's not glamorous, but it's doable. All right, well, I'm out of time for today, but here's where I'm leaving it. Got my wiring run. Of course, this will all get loomed, but it runs right down. I'll be able to conceal most of it right under or near the fuel rail. Runs back to the back to pick up my cam position sensor, oil pressure sensor, and knock sensor. Then comes across over to this side. These injectors and ignition wires join up. And then my main harness here is actually gonna get tucked up over in the back here. I need to get my, uh, my heater core hoses plumbed first. And then I'll be able to tuck my wire right up over top of those. It'll be out of sight. I think it'll look really nice. Uh, I'll be able to put whatever excess wire I have. There's actually quite a bit of space back here by the PCM between the AC box and the firewall. So I'll be able to tuck whatever excess wiring I have back in there. 
So there'll be very little exposed wiring in the engine compartment, which I think will look nice. And then my starter exciter and crankshaft position sensors, those are actually going to run in and I'll drop them off the harness back here at the back to go down and actually connect with the starter. So again, there'll be very little exposed wire. I think it's going to look really good, be very clean. And uh, I just need to finish actually running it and get some fuel hooked up to this thing so I can do a test fire before I put looming and get it all wrapped up and, and looking really pretty. All right, team, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this information useful and helpful if you're doing something like this or, or even just swapping a V8 and LS into some other vehicle. And I really appreciate all of you watching. Uh, thanks so much to all the new subscribers and everybody commenting and liking the videos. That really does help the channel out and gives me a lot of uh, encouragement and helps me share something that I love doing. So thanks again and until the next video, take care.